یا صاحب زمان He must go to Iraq and conquer Iraq. And as he enters Iraq, this is where the Shia are, now kill every Shia you can find. There are narrations from Imam Ali alayhi salam. He says, it's as if I can see the Sufyani now making his declaration saying, for everyone who brings me the head of a Shi'i, he will receive 1,000 dirhams. And then people will come with heads of Shi'a and they will take their payment. Then he says, it's as if I can see the veiled one amongst you who can speak your language and who acts like one of you. But then when he points to you, they come and they take you and they kill you. And the commentary on that part of the hadith is that there are going to be people amongst us who look like us, who talk like us, pretend to be part of us, but they're inner spies. There's someone in this room, Salam alaikum. Okay, you know, amongst us in the mosque, there's always one or two guys here to go and report a fanatic or whatever. This is the veiled one. This is the same veiled one. Like to prevent strategy and all that kind of stuff. It's all there. It's, it's happening now. Yani. It's, this is something that you can apply 100%. So you can see it, it's in your narrations. And you can apply it. That one, 100% the shoe fits. So the imam is saying, I can see the veiled one, I can see the Sufyani calling for the heads of the Shia. The Sufyani marches through Iraq and he starts to go from town to town, killing everyone in his way. Killing Women killing children and killing every man he can find. There's no one that's supposed to remain alive that could be a helper of the imam. No one's allowed. And there are people now, remember yesterday I said there are people on earth, al-abdal, they're gathering, they're working, they're with the imam, they're working for the imam, perhaps we're under them, perhaps we're working with, for them, we don't know about it. These abdal, they'll be working themselves, He's looking for them. He's hunting them. He's hunting those that have the intention to be with the Imam. So, he's killing people by the thousands. At this time, black flags will come from Khurasan. There'll be a man that will rise, known as Al Khurasani, very powerful man. A man with great knowledge, and he will be coming towards Kufa as well. Imam al Sadiq says, Sufyani and Al Khurasani race towards Kufa like two horses, one coming from the east, one coming from the west. And everything in the middle of them is getting destroyed in the crossfire. It's a great battle that's happening. Lots of mini battles and skirmishes happening. Ultimately, Sufyani reaches Kufa first, way before Khurasan. And he kills 60,000 people in Kufa in three days. Then he remains there for 18 days, he establishes his base, but then he gets a call from Hijaz, from Saudi. He has to go to Saudi now, because there's an uprising going on. People around the world, they're seeing what's happening. People are dying everywhere. There's oppression everywhere. And people are speaking of the name of the Savior and the Messiah, and he's coming. And they need to squash this ASAP. So, Sufiani, they can rely on him. He's someone, wherever he goes... He squashes, he destroys. So he decides to keep his army in Kufa and he goes towards Hijaz. He sets on his way. At this time, another man comes from Yemen called Al Yamani. This man, in the narrations of Ahlul Bayt, he's a Sayyid. He is someone who is not known as a Mujtahid or Marja or anything like that, but he has such great charisma. And such courage that people come around him in droves. He's able to gather thousands and thousands of people around him like other people can't do. And his main mission is to go to meet Khurasani in order to prepare for the return of the Imam. So Al Yamani sets on his way with his army also towards the army of the Sufiani. Likewise, Khurasani does the same until. They reach Kufa and they destroy the army of a Sufyani that was in Kufa until they retreat. Without the Sufyani there, they retreat. When they retreat, they take over Kufa. And then in Kufa, they pledge allegiance to the Imam before the Imam comes back. So they're saying, We're ready. Yalla. They pledge allegiance to the Imam in Kufa now. Yamani and Khurasani are ready with their respective armies. 
But Sufyani has gathered his armies now towards Hijaz. He's gone towards Hijaz and he is hunting. Again, now in Hijaz, he goes to Medina and he starts killing all sorts of people in Medina. And he's hunting for the Imam. In this state, the narrations say the Imam is like Musa. السلام, he's waiting for the decree of Allah. Awaiting, awaiting. He's with a, nam, a man named Al Mansur. Sometimes this man's named Muhammad, sometimes Al Mansur. These two are together. It seems that this man, Al Mansur, is his messenger. And they're waiting together until the Imam, this is months now have passed by. The Imam tells Al Mansur, because Muharram now is in two weeks. He tells Al Mansur to go towards Mecca and I will follow you. Go towards Mecca and announce that I'm coming. Almost time. Mansur goes towards Mecca. In the middle of the Haram, he stands next to the Kaaba and he calls out that the Imam has returned. When he does this, he is immediately assassinated. And this man is known as Al Nafsu Zakiya, the pure soul. This is the final sign of the coming of the Imam. Two weeks before the Imam returns, al nafsu Zakiya is killed. So al nafsu Zakiya now is killed. They trace this man, Al-Mansur, his family ties. They find his two children, Muhammad wa Fatima, in Medina. And they kill them by the mosque door. And they crucify them. They crucify Muslim children all over Hijaz and Iraq. Sufyani now knows that the Imam has been announced, he's coming. Everyone's now scared, if anyone utters the word of the return of the imam, they're killed. No one's allowed. So everyone's very scared and everyone's on edge at that time. As this is happening, here, subhanAllah, the 313 warriors, they're brought together. By supernatural means, 313 of the greatest companions, the greatest men this earth has seen. The closest people to Imam Mahdi, chosen and gathered together by supernatural means. A miracle from Allah. These men will be initiated into the sacred science, sacred ilm, special ilm, and they will be given swords from heaven. Each one will have a sword from heaven. Inscribed upon each one's sword is a thousand words, each word leading to a thousand more. That's what's inscribed on each sword. Of these 313 men. 313 was the number of the companions of the Prophet in the first battle of Islam, which was Badr. And it will be the number of the main generals of the Imam in his final battle. They're known as Jaish ul Ghadab, the army of anger, or Jaish al Ikhlas, the army of the sincere ones, the devotees, or Jaish. Jaish al Mahdi al Jaish. And interestingly enough, in numerology, Jim, Ya, and Shim, they add up to 313 in terms of numerical value. So I believe that Jim is 3, and Ya is 10, and Shin is 100. I found 300. I'll check that as soon as I finish now, because my memory is not serving me right. But 313 is the numerical value of the word jaysh in Arabic. So then, these men will be given very special powers, so much that birds and beasts will obey them, and they can communicate with the imam through their palms, the narrations say. Whether that's, that means a cell phone or an actual palm, we don't know. But whenever the imam wants to send them instructions or a direction, he communicates them through, with them through their palms. They see the instruction. And they see, ultimately, as this is all happening, you can see that the people that want to be with the imam are growing, but they're scared. The people who want to be with the imam are growing slowly, but they're afraid to be with the imam. The ones who continue to fight against the imam are the ignorant ones. The ones that they don't care if the truth is in front of them. Because another sign that occurs is the people of the cave also emerge on the coasts of Turkey with their dog. 
and Tabut as sakina that I mentioned in the beginning, the treasure. Men who are companions of the Imam, they come with the treasure with the gospel and the Torah. And the armies that were stationed along the coasts leading up to Palestine, they don't want to fight anymore. They don't want to fight anymore because they're seeing the truth in front of them. The ones that continue, the part of the Sufyani's army that continues is seen as people who are renegades. They're rogue and renegades. At this time, the balance of power is starting to shift because people, they don't want this anymore. The people, the people of Rome even are seeing the truth.